Hello and welcome to another video by Game, by Game Dev, Dev Journey. Journey. This week we will implement a little scenario in which a vacuum cleaner sucks up some dust sprites in order to see how the different engines, Godo, Construct and Game Maker, handle simple collisions and object destruction. If you enjoy the video, please tap that like button so that YouTube can spread it to more people. And please subscribe if you want to support me in making new videos. Let's have a look at how Godot gets it done. All right, here we are in Godot and we'll start with a root node. I'm going to select node. It's the most basic form of node. And let's rename it to world because this will represent the world that our scenario takes place in. For the background, we'll add a texture rect and we'll um, change the layout to full rect so it occupies the full viewport and I've already got a carpet pattern which we will drag into the texture and we will just scale it no let's not tile it let's scale it and leave it leave it like that that's good enough and uh, let's just rename it background so we know what it is we can now go ahead and save this scene as well it'll be our main scene let's make a new scene again we're going to add a node but this time we're going to add an area 2d node because we're dealing with basic collisions the idea behind the scenario is when one uh, object game object um, intersects or overlaps with another we want to detect that and then do something with the game objects so we're going to have an area 2d we'll add a sprite for its texture i've already got a dust buster sprite ready we'll pull that in let's just scale it down a little bit maybe by half on the x and the y that's a bit better right now we need a collision um a collision area or a collision shape take that this will be our hitbox where we can detect collisions or detect overlaps or intersects and we'll just rename it to collision and we'll give it a shape now the easiest one here will be the rectangle shape and what we'll do is we'll put this rectangle sort of around the front of the dust buster so that we can only detect collisions on the front of the dust buster you wouldn't want to think that you're able to suck up dust sprites with the handle so if we move it around it's no problem we just shape it um, to fit and that looks okay we don't have to be perfect you know this is just a scenario to demonstrate what we're doing and we'll lock it so that we can move everything together all the items are now grouped all of these nodes are grouped let's save it as vacuum and let's add a script just to handle the movement controls and the collision detection and so on. Now we'll add a variable here to control the speed of the vacuum cleaner or dust buster. Um, not an on ready variable, this should just be an export uh, variable. For the on ready variable, we want to access the sprite uh, to flip its image so that can be an on ready variable we'll call it sprite and it will be the actual sprite node now let's add in the variable for the speed this can be an export variable so that we can change its properties in the inspector so let's call it an export variable which exposes it to the inspector we'll make it an int so that you can only change it using whole numbers and we'll set the speed to 200. now let's make our move function and we will pass a speed and delta, which is the change in, which is the amount of time it took to run the previous frame. Basically, delta smooths out the movement. So, if they are pressing the left arrow, right arrow, up arrow, down arrow, if they're pressing these keys on the keyboard, we will react. So if they're pressing the right key, we're going to change the X position of the Dust Buster. So we will set the X position to speed times delta. And what I'm going to 
do is just copy and paste because it's all basically the same code and I'm going to make a few little changes to the key and the position coordinates. So this will be the left key but in this case we'll be subtracting and the next one will be the down key but in this case it's the Y position and the last one will be the up key and we'll be subtracting again. Right, so there we have our movement function and all we have to do now is call this function in the main game loop which is the process delta function so if we call move and we send through speed and delta we would be able to test that the vacuum cleaner can move around the screen so if we go and run our scene you'll see that we can in fact move the vacuum cleaner but it doesn't point in the direction it's moving so let's add in some code to flip the sprite on the horizontal axis so if we're moving right we're going to go ahead and flip the horizontal and the same for the left key in fact we may have to reverse these given the way the sprite is pointing at the moment so let's just test it and we'll see so that movement actually looks perfect so what we can do now is save this scene and create another scene for the dust sprites i already have a texture prepared which we can use so let's go ahead and repeat the process of getting an area 2d as our root node let's rename it to dust sprite we will use a sprite node as a child for the texture we can drag in the texture that I have of these cute little dust sprites let's just resize them a little bit maybe a quarter of their size Let's do the collision shapes for these sprites. So we we'll go to our recent list, grab our collision shape, zoom in a little bit. Let's use a capsule, it will be perfect. If we just rotate it 90 degrees onto its side, it'll cover these sprites nicely. We drag it out by the handles, and that will do just fine. Okay, so we can save that scene. Now we can head into our script again and attach a body entered signal so that when one body enters another body we just delete the object. Now we can instance our Dustbuster by dragging the scene file into the world scene drag vacuum.tscn in we can see that it's been instanced and we can put it wherever we need it and now we can instance a few dust sprites and we can just control D to duplicate them uh, we've created it as a child of the vacuum and we've duplicated the vacuum let's just delete that make the dust sprite child of the world just make sure that it is in front of the background and now we can duplicate some dust sprites let's duplicate them and spread them around there we go and now we can test the game and see select our main scene of course the world and we can see if we can vacuum up some dust sprites sprites are all gone now let's move into construct and see how it does it
Right, let's rename our layer to background and add the carpet as a sprite, which we will fill the entire viewport with. So we'll add our sprite game object, we'll click and put our carpet in, and let's just resize it to the size of the viewport, 1920 by 1080. And we'll just move it along. We're not too bothered by accuracy for these little scenarios, but there's our carpet. Okay, let's lock it so we don't actually select it. Let's add a new layer for our game objects and let's name it game objects. Now let's add our vacuum cleaner sprite. So we'll add our sprite, we'll click, we'll add our vacuum cleaner. Just drag it in, I've got it ready. Okay, that was a mistake. I've added in all three. Let's just delete that. Let's add a sprite again. Click and just add in the vacuum cleaner this time. There we go. Okay, now let's just resize it. It's a little bit small, maybe 200 or 220 by 220. Looks fine. Let's position it. Let's add some keyboard input to this project. And let's add a movement behavior to the Hoover. So we'll add a direction movement and we'll just adjust the speed, maximum a thousand, the acceleration can be a hundred thousand, so we get really instant movement. But we'll change it from eight to four directions and let's set the angle to no so that it doesn't rotate around its axis. Okay, now let's add the dust sprites to our scenario. There will also be sprites, these little dust motes. We'll just drag them in and resize them. Looks fine. Let's just resize them using our eye and the handles. And now we can just duplicate them all over the carpet. And put a fair number in here so we get an idea of how this little scenario works let's go to our keyboard and let's say that on key pressed left arrow we are going to um, set our sprite to be not mirrored this is the horizontal flipping in construct and when we press the right arrow we do want the sprite to be mirrored Let's just set that up. Done. Okay. Now let's also make it so that when the sprites are colliding, so on collision with another object, on collision with the dust sprites, I haven't renamed these sprites, so we're just doing it because we can see the image. We will destroy the sprite. Let's test it. Right, okay, that error where I imported all three images is still present, so we'll get rid of that in a moment. But as you can see, it's vacuuming up these little dust sprites quite easily. Let's just get rid of those three um, images that I added accidentally. I can see I've got multiple sprites here. There they are. Okay, let's just get rid of those two. And they're probably still on the other one as well, but let's just have a check. Yep, they're still there. Let's get rid of them on the other one. And now everything should work exactly as it did in Godot. So let's run that and see what the outcome is. There we go. Suck these dust sprites right up. So this worked pretty much the same. Okay, let's go and have a look at how this gets done in Game Maker Studio 2. So here we are in Game Maker Studio 2. To save time, I've already set up all the sprites 
because you know how to do it. Right click, create sprite, import the sprite, resize it, and so on. We know that Game Maker makes it a bit tedious, so I've gone ahead and skipped that for you and already done it. I'm just making the objects and attaching the sprites to them. So here you can see I've create each object one by one. I've done the vacuum clean already. This one will be the um, dust and we'll just attach the sprite, dust sprites to it. And the last one will be our background, our carpet. Um, but before we do that, let's just do the events here. So when the uh, left key is down, we are wanting to flip the sprite and move him at a certain speed. So let's just find the correct, there we go. This will flip the sprite, set the instance scale to negative one because we're moving towards the left on the X or the horizontal. And we then want to choose our direction, fixed direction left and set the speed to something like five or 10. And we're gonna do the same for the right, except we're not going to flip the horizontal. So when the right key is down, we're going to set the flipping back to normal, set the direction to the right, and set the speed to 10. Then we're gonna do up and down. So, key down, up, set our direction to up, set our speed to 10. And our last key will be the down key, is down, set our direction to down, and we'll set our speed to 10. Now we have our keys set up, we can test it. Oh, of course, we need to actually add the Hoover to the room. So we'll have to go ahead and do that. So we'll come and do that just now, but let's set up the collision event on the dust. So when the dust collides with the vacuum cleaner, the dust will be destroyed. So we will destroy this instance. Now that that is done, let's add the Hoover or Dustbuster to the instance layer of our room. We'll add in some dust and we'll just copy and paste make a few instances of dust all around the carpet just as we've done for the other engines move them around so we have a nice little spread and now we can actually test the movement so there we go we can move around and suck up the dust the only thing is we don't actually stop moving so when we release a key, we need to stop moving. So let's just add a uh, no key down. So what we have is when no key is pressed, we'll set the speed to zero. This will make sure that when we're not pressing a key, our little dust buster stops moving. Actually, I just realized that the left and right flipping of the sprite are inverted. We just need to swap those. So the left should be one and right should be minus one. And that should be correct. Perfect. Well, that's all I have time for today. I think Game Maker came out on top in terms of ease of use this time. I just want to say thank you all for joining me and I hope to see you all again next time.